Dear colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen, hey everybody and welcome to this presentation. I'm Viktor Mischerian from TU Dresden in Germany and I'm going to talk about integrating reinforcement in digital publication with concrete. Well, this is indeed a very dynamic and rapidly developing field of research and for good reasons. The new digital fabrication methods offer higher geometrical freedom in comparison to conventional method, and this is quasi free of charge. And this is a good news not for the architects only, since the geometrical freedom also widens considerably our options for material minimization of structural members, for implementing such principles as form follows force. In addition, specific topology enable to introduce some extra functionalities such as enhanced acoustic features or thermal insulation capacity. Another driving force is the urgent need to increase productivity in construction, which indeed has been stagnated over decades already. This tendency is aligned specifically against the background of worldwide continuously growing demand for new construction in combination with a shortage of skilled labor for on-site operative work. Automation and digitation in construction are the only feasible options to master this challenge. Note that tools of Digital design and planning, such as CAD or BIM, are already relatively well developed. Obviously, the seamless data flow from digital planning into fully automated construction would mark the qualitatively new technology level, which we often refer to as construction industry 4.0. The apprehension of the huge potential of digital fabrication technologies has led to development of a great number of approaches to digital fabrication as concrete, and it's really easy to lose the overview in the current storm of information on the topic. Fortunately, we have Rylan. Rylan TC on digital fabrication as concrete, led by Nicola Roussel, the Rylan president himself, has developed a sound framework that helps to define, describe, and classify all processes needed. I cannot go here into detail, but you can find them in this Rylan State of the Art report together with much more relevant information on the topic. This classification framework focuses on concrete. And since concrete needs reinforcement in most practical applications, our next step was to extend the classification with respect to integration of reinforcement. And this is what my talk is about. Now, let us consider various options for integrating reinforcement. The easiest possible step for introducing reinforcement is during mixing by adding short fiber. By using a comprehensive material design, we can attain a ductile strain hardening behavior for such print materials when subject to unnatural tension. This material concept was recently successfully used by our partner Shimizu Corporation in Japan for fabrication of integrated formwork for bridge support. Another option is to place reinforcement prior to concrete shaping. In these two cases, reinforcement is encased with concrete in an additive process while it doesn't provide any substantial support to fresh concrete. In contrast, in these two examples, reinforcement provides support to concrete. Here, the concrete shaping process is a formative one, actually, since the shape of the element is defined by the supporting reinforcement. Obviously, we have two fabrication steps here, first reinforcement, then concrete. Yeah, it works also other way around. Reinforcement can be placed on printed concrete to complete an element. So in a similar way, how we do it now in a conventional strengthening measures. All printed elements or parts can be assembled to a structure and then reinforced, for example, using post-tension cables. 
for additive manufacturing methods with concrete, reinforcement can be also integrated within a single process step as a sub-process occurring during concrete shaping. It means when concrete is still in its fresh state. There are four known approaches. The first approach is the placement of reinforcement between the layers of concrete. It's a contiguous process, even if we place concrete directly after placing a reinforcement, as it was shown here on the right hand. Cross-layer enhancement is also a contiguous process. Vertical or inclined fragments of reinforcement, as well as their attendant horizontal components, are placed before the next concrete layer is deposited. The concrete layer encases are fragments, but still doesn't cover their tops, since further reinforcement fragments will be attached there in order to establish cross-layer reinforcement. The third approach also addresses cross-layer arrangement of reinforcement. However, the key feature here is the reinforcement is induced by penetration while the concrete is still in the fresh state. Typically, straight one-dimensional pieces of reinforcement are used for this purpose, either pins or screws. Also, this process is a contiguous one. In contrast, the fourth single-step approach is a simultaneous process. The reinforcement is entrained into concrete bulk before material deposition. For extrusion-based processes, entrainment of cables or yarns, for example, can be realized as a part of the printhead process. Short fiber or textile or fine meshes can be entrained as well. Well, following this sequence of examples, you probably got already the feeling how the suggested classification framework for integrated reinforcement in DFC looks like. Indeed, it considers the sequence of distinct processes according to the manufacturing timeline of product as a starting point. And it begins right there where the Rylan framework for concrete ends. It means at the level of the process subclass for shaping concrete. For additive manufacturing methods with concrete, reinforcement can be integrated within a single process step as a sub process occurring during concrete shaping. This is not feasible for formative processes. However, the integration of reinforcement prior or after concrete shaping, it means in a separate step can be performed both with additive or formative approaches in a similar manner. These options are indicated in the classification as two-step processes. In addition, concrete mixing is defined as the prayer process preceding any concrete shaping process. During mixing, short fiber may be added as a dispersed reinforcement to produce either ready mix or dry mix for further use in both single step or two-step DFC processes. We are talking here as a next step uh, about the key features uh, or categories. You see that actually every example I provided that far can be assigned to one of these categories. And finally, as a last uh, line in this diagram, you see also types of reinforcement. It means that the classification also provides a link to structure design by naming the options for the choice of reinforcement. And you see here, we have quite a <laughs> wide range of options from cages, meshes uh, towards bars, cables, yarns, and short fiber. More details you find in this uh, article, my deep appreciation to my co-authors. We had really great discussion, fantastic cooperation. Thank you so much, guys. Finally, let me um, give you some examples for applying the new classification. For sake of clarity, I will use simple process flowcharts here. The first example is the single step process in which reinforcing cable is entrained into concrete filament and deposited simultaneously with concrete shaped by extrusion. The purely digital process continues until the printed part is finished, while the sub-process of the cable entrainment can be interrupted on demand by cutting the cable and stopping the feed. And, of course, the entrainment can be eventually resumed by restarting the feed. 
In such a way, the segments of the bicycle bridge and Jemand, uh, the uh, Netherlands, were produced. Not that for this single step process, the segment is the end product. The example number two shows the entire multi-step process of the bridge fabrication. The first process step is equivalent to the example one, with the difference that not a single part is produced, but a number of segments are printed consequently. The second process step is assembling the parts. And finally, third process step is placing the pre-stressing strands and post-tensioning them. Note that the second and the third processes were performed in a conventional manner in the given example, but they can, in principle, be digitized and automated. The third example illustrates the single-step process in which concrete is shaped additively by extrusion and cross-layers reinforcement is introduced contiguously. First, several layers of concrete are deposited one upon the other, followed by nailing layers of fresh concrete with steel pins. After a distinct number of pins is inserted, the concrete printing is resumed to deposit further several layers before this procedure is interrupted again to give way to penetrated pins. Such alteration can be repeated numerous times until the printed product is completed. In the given example, it's a wall-like demonstrator. And uh, finally, uh, example number four presents a relatively rare case where reinforcement is produced first in a distinct process step by assembling steel, mats, and bars. This step is followed by progressing encasement of reinforcement mats or cage with concrete in an additive extrusion-based shaping process. Since the printhead dimensions limit the height of the reinforcing elements, which can be encased in the approach under consideration, several repetitions of this sequence, it means assembly reinforcement and concrete printing, are required before the product, here it's an in situ printed wall, is finished. In this way, Huang San Tenga fabricated a two story villa in Beijing. Note that in the given example, the assembling of reinforcement was performed in a conventional manner, but this process step can be potentially automated and digitized as well. Well, I trust uh, that you got now an idea about the suggested framework. If you like it, please use it. This would considerably facilitate the mutual understanding in the complex and multidisciplinary field of digital concrete construction. I would like to finally emphasize that classification framework is a product of a joint effort by the members of the former Ryland TC 276. Since much more needs to be done to enable the wide use of the digital publication is concrete in the practice of construction, Rylan initiated two new TCs on 3D concrete printing, one focusing on fresh material and the second one on hardened concrete performance. Well, I'm done, I guess. But thank you so much for listening to my talk and I'm looking forward to your questions.